Well, good Friday morning. Hey, glad you tuned in. But I'm excited. The weekend is almost here. And that means we get to worship our Lord. And for Saddleback Church, that means Clubhouse 5 at 9 and 11 this weekend. And we would love to greet you. You will be warmly greeted. We have a team that that's their ministry. They want to make you feel comfortable. If you do attend another church, fantastic. Just be sure you go. You To worship together with your church is just an awesome privilege that we should never miss. Well, today in our study of the 12 apostles, we come to the apostle John. John is just an amazing person. One of those people that I know I want to look up and get to know in heaven. How about you? He is the author, or God used him to be the author of five New Testament books. Do you know what they are? Obviously, the Gospel of John, where he tells and accounts the, the story of Jesus' life. Then he had three little epistles called... First, second, and third, John. And they really talk about love and the importance of love. And actually, we're going to close out today with a quote from one of his books. But then, in it, later in life, he was exiled to the, an island called Patmos. And there he wrote and was given the privilege of looking into heaven. And he wrote the book we call Revelation. And it's a book that we treasure. Well, we treasure them all. But he wrote that, and we actually studied it here in Inspiration for Today and spent a little over a month going verse by verse through that book. And if you want to study Revelation in an understandable way, I encourage you to look that up on YouTube and take advantage of it. Take advantage of it. You can do it in a much shorter time. Now, John had a brother named James, and Jesus called them sons of thunder. And that's such an interesting thing, because uh, when John, when you start reading through the Gospels, John changed over time. He, of course, you know, John was in the inner circle of Jesus along with Peter and James. And those three got to see the when Jesus had a con uh, conversation with Moses and Elijah on the Mount of Transfiguration, John was there. And later on, but he, he was impetuous. He was... Well, zealous, actually. Uh, and so early on, you see him speaking up in bold ways. For instance, in Mark chapter 9, he, he forbid a man to cast out demons in Jesus' name because he wasn't part of the 12. And then, but Jesus gently rebukes him and says, don't worry about it, John. No one could cast out demons unless... I was in there, unless I was a part of it. <laughs> and then in uh, Luke chapter 9, at verse 51 to 54, he, he, he says, no, he, he says, he tries to call down fire from heaven on the Samaritans <laughs> just because they refused to welcome Jesus. And of course, Jesus handled that too. But as you continue to read through the Gospels, and in those three years, you'll find that something changes about John. And humility becomes a mark of him. That, you know, I'm not sure what it was, what got to him, but we do know that John, in his Gospel account, is the only one, not Matthew, not Mark, not Luke, who recorded when Jesus washed 
their feet, the disciples' feet, on, on the night of the Last Supper. That just seemed to have just touched his heart. That Jesus would do such a thing. That obviously Jesus valued humility. And it's something that needs to make a mark on us too. When God allows us the privilege of doing something, for him even, we do it because he first loved us. And it's in thanksgiving for all he's done for you and for me. And I don't think it's an accident then that, that, that later on from the cross, do you remember who Jesus asked to take care of his mother? It was John. It was John. Jesus had that kind of trust now in this son of thunder who he wasn't that way anymore. He now was a humble servant of Jesus. Jesus' request was a serious thing. And that was who Jesus asked his friend, John. Well, John went on and, of course, did do those things and became a, he's called in, uh, I think, it's, let's see, Galatians. Paul calls him a pillar of the church. He had become a, one of the wise people that was leading the church. That was John. And he was so devoted to the proclamation of truth. So much of his writings talks about beware of those who would lie and deceive and teach false doctrine. And we read the book of 1 John, the first epistle that he wrote. He warns so much about that. And he does in the other two also. He says, walk in the truth. And who is the truth? Of course, Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. John was this adamant that we walk in Jesus, especially he was harsh on those who claim to be believers. I, we have, you and I have so much to thank John for when we get to see him. And those three, those five books, fantastic books, each and every one of them. May I just close with reading from Second John, his second epistle. And uh, he even says at, at, at verse 5, chapter 1, verse 5, he says, I am writing to remind you, dear friends, and I think that you and I, we're certainly brothers and sisters in Christ with him, so we would be included in that, dear friends that we should love one another. This is not a new commandment, but one that we have had from the beginning. Love means doing what God has commanded us, and he commanded us to love one another, just as you heard from the beginning. It was so important to John that there not be division and arguing and gossip and backbiting in the church. Friends, that's that's our goal for our church. It's our desire and prayer for all the churches around us that we love one another. By the way, you can't fulfill the one another. You can't do that alone. You, you cannot follow that command being alone. You need to be in the fellowship of other believers so that you can love one another. Hey, have a great weekend. Walk closely with your Lord. And we're going to finish up on Monday and Tuesday. There's two more to go. And uh, I didn't combine so we can do them then. See you then. Bye. And I won't worry about tomorrow.